To replace Governor Gavin Newsom is now just over a month away. Joining us to talk more about that very topic is the chair of the California GOP, Jessica Milan Patterson. Good morning, Jessica. Good morning, Paul. Thanks for having me. Oh, uh, it's our honor. Uh, the polls seem to be tightening. What polls should I be looking at? Well, there's been three and three weeks that are all public polls that show just about the same thing. Uh, about 46 yes on the recall, 48 no on the recall. We're right there in the margin of error. And what's been very clear is there's no amount of money, there is no amount of government money that this governor can hand out like he's Oprah that can change what he's done to lead our state or, or his lack of leadership over the last three years. Well, he does have the sitting governor, as you might expect, obviously he has access to the, he has the keys to the treasury and he can shovel out money in any direction he wants. And then he also has a lot of money supporting his, his uh, campaign no on the recall. How do you compete against that sizable money advantage? Well, he certainly does have a money advantage. You know, he's raised about $40 million from special interests around our state. What he doesn't have is the will of the people. And this has been a movement, a movement that didn't start within the Republican Party. It started with people from all over our state that had experienced different things. Some of them were the 20,000 business owners that had to shut down their doors permanently. Some of them were parents who watched their children finish a second year with distance learning and our state still being the last in the nation to get our kids back to full-time in-person school. Some of them are people who lost their jobs and went to their government for the very first times in their life needing help and are part of the 1 million backlogged Californians that needed help. Well, $11 billion worth of fraud went out to our uh, people in our own prisons. So this is a cross-section of, of Californians, um, of all political stripes. We saw in these polls, 54% um, of independents are supporting the recall. When you look at the Latino community, we're at 54% supporting the recall. This isn't a Republican recall. This is a California recall. And we are so fortunate that unlike places like New York, we have a system in place where we can hold our elected officials accountable. Jessica, but isn't elections like warfare the the country that controls the skies usually controls the outcome and it, you're, he's going to control the air war will he not as we hit get 30 days out he's just going to i mean all you're going to see is newsom ads i do believe that he is going to be up on the tv i also believe he is not giving californians enough credit every time he pigeonholes this as some sort of right-wing conspiracy or you know people that uh you know just haven't been you know in the shoes that we have been i think he does he, he does himself a disservice because californians are a lot smarter than that they know what they've experienced they know whose policies have put us in this position and they're ready to hold him accountable Frequently when I talk to political pundits, they say to me, hey, the thing that's going to decide this election hasn't occurred yet. But now we're 30 days out. Is, does that sage advice, does that apply to this? Or have the things that's going to decide this election, are they already cast in stone? I think that so many Californians have been affected. They've made up their mind. But there's certainly a swing population there that is going to decide this. And what our job at the California Republican Party is to talk to voters. Talk to voters about what has occurred. Make sure that they know that the only way we can change things here in California is if we have new leadership at the top. So that's going to be our job over the next month plus. And we're going to be out there every single day talking to voters and making sure that they vote yes on the recall. As, as it relates to debates and having everybody get together, I, I, you're never going to get the governor to come. And uh, front runners probably will sit him out. There's also another saying, together we stand, divided we fall. Will these debate, the debates divide the Republican candidates to a point where the infighting will cost you votes? So I think that we're in a fantastic position with no real prominent Democrat on that second question of who would replace Governor Newsom. This gives candidates an amazing opportunity to go out there on a big stage and talk to voters. Show us why you would be the best replacement for Gavin Newsom. I think it's a great opportunity, and I think that the candidates should participate to the extent that they can so that voters can hear from them. 
What we saw in this last poll was, um, you know, regardless of where you were on the recall, um, on the second question, about 40% of voters were undecided on who they would like to replace Gavin Newsom. So they have a huge opportunity to connect with that 40% and show what their plans for our state to turn us around would be. Jessica, last question to you. What percentage of Democratic voters do you need to get to yet yes on question one? I think that it's all going to depend on turnout, but if we're around that 20% marker on Democrats, I think we're going to be great. And if you had to guess right now, looking into your, how far off are you from that 20% number? I think we're very, very good in that, in that area. Jessica Milan Patterson, thank you for making time for KUSI. Thank you. Millions of Americans.